Now, so last class we started talking about the verbs and we said that the verbs are three types. And we said that the asul of the verb is that they're mabni. So we have al madi and al amr. Both of these types of verbs, they are mabni da iman. They don't have haraka, they don't change, they don't have movements. And then we explain to you uh, the different opinion about it's mabni on what. Uh, as the author mentioned that uh, he takes the opinion that it is mabni on fatha always and then everything else you do a uh, taqdeer. Uh, but then we also give you other opinion which was much easier that it would be mabni on uh, the haraka that you have based on the isnad of the verbs. It can be mabni on bomma, it can be mabni on sukun as well. But to be honest with you, what the author mentioned that it is mabni on fatha, that is more daqiq, that is more precise. That opinion is much, much more precise. But the problem is that it is very difficult to do Arab. For example, you say dhahabu, you want to do Arab of this, you have to say mabni, then you have to say mabni on fatha, muqaddara, you have to write the whole story. Because anytime you say mabni on something other than fatha, you need an explanation. So when you do Arab, it becomes uh, long. But then we said uh, the mudare. Mudare is not mabni. Mudare is morab. And uh, I think I mentioned to you this word many, many times in different uh, lectures that mudare, it does not mean present tense verb. This comes from the verb dara. Dara yudareu mudareatan. What is dara? Dara, it means to have a resemble of something, it to have to be similar to something. Okay, so this is the word dara means. So and the mudare it, it is the ismul file. So that means it's saying that this word actual meaning, the literal meaning is that it is it resembles something. So and we explain to it resembles what? It needs to resemble something, and we said it resembles ism. How does it resemble ism? It resembles ism in few different things. The main primary thing that the grammarian are concerned is that it resembles with regards to being morab. The grammarian eyes that ism is the only morab. And the harf, we said that everything is mabni. All the huruf are mabniya. And the verbs, we said the asal is the mabni, but except for the mudare. So that's why they give this name, that it has a resemble of the, uh, of the nouns. It, it declines. And also, you will see it has other few uh, similarities with the uh, ism as well. Okay. Now, another question, something that I haven't talked about last time. When we say mudare is morab, is it always morab? Is it mutlaqan? It is that every single mudare is a morab. Hmm? What do you think? No, it's not. So there are some cases that the mudare, it is not Morab, it is mabni. Anyone know what are the situations? Hmm? So yes, it is mabni when it is connected with nun al inath. So it's called nun al inath. Then it will be mabni. So you have, for example, you have yadhabu. He goes. This is morab. Then we have tadhabu. We said it could be. Uh, sorry, it could be she goes or uh, you go for masculine, but what is the plural of tadhabu? Hmm? Yadhabna, right? Is is yadhabna. Yadhabna. This is the noon of inath. So whenever a verb is connected with this noon, it is mabni. It will never change. It becomes mabni. So this is something that you have to know. And what is another situation? Is that all? Is there another situation when the mudare can be a mabni? Yes, there's another situation when it is connected to noon at tawkid. Noon at tawkid. Okay, what is the noon at tawkid? Noon at tawkid, there's two types, the light version and the heavy version, but I'm not going to go into that discussion because there are some exceptions. But basically, it is the noon of shadda. So, for example, you say, yadhabanna. So you have this noon, uh, usually this noon comes with the uh, lam of tawqid also. La yadhabanna. For example, Allah says, la nukhbirannaka. We will surely 
inform you. La nukhbirannaka. La azidannakum. When you have this noon of tawkid, then this present tense verb will be mabni. This present tense verb will be mabni. So this thing you have to know. Okay, this is a side note, an important side note. You have to know. So when we say mudare is mu'rab, except for these two cases, when it is connected with nunul inas, or when it's connected with noon at tawkid, this situation it will be, uh, it will be mabni. Jamil, anything else I'm missing here? No. So with that, now we can go back to we can go back to reading uh, because now that we said modare is morab except for these two cases, now we have to say what are the states and how do we identify the states with something that we have skipped from the day one. And inshallah, today we'll finally uh, get to read uh, those things. So uh, remember, uh, when when it comes to Arab, there are four states. Four states, okay? We have the Raf, Nasb, and Khav. And Khav means Jar, and you have Jazm. And the author clearly mentioned that here's Lil Afali min Zalik. For the verbs from those, you have only you have Raf, you have Nasb, and you have Jazm. So there is la khafda fiha. That means there is no jar. We talked about this thing, okay? So now the author talks about what the rough state and its alama, okay? So because the verbs, the fail also has the rough state, so we want to know what is the alama of the rough for the verb, okay? So it starts with the dhamma. So the dhamma is also an alama of verbs that is marfu. So he says to al fail al mudari al lam yattasil bi akhirihi shayi. So any verb that does not have any pronoun connected to it, then it its alama would be dhamma. So your simple verb. So for example, you say yadhabu, yadhabu. So here is your dhamma. So this dhamma, this dhamma is your alama of the raf, which is the same thing as the nouns. And then he will go into uh, noon. Before I go into noon. Before I go into something else, we need to mention which uh, this author did not mention, nor did uh, Mumte, and I also checked the explanation of uh, Tuhfa, and none of them mentioned this important topic, which is the Taqdiri. Because not all verb will have the Dhamma al Zahira. Because there are some verbs ends with what? There are some verbs ends with one of the illa. Remember the lecture that I gave last time? about huruf al-illa, fi'l, mu'tal. These things, I told you, they will come and hunt you or wherever you go. So the situation happens when you have a verb that is mu'tal, uh, especially a naqis, meaning you have the huruf al-illa at the end of the verb. Then for the dhamma case, for the dhamma, for the rough, for the rough state, all of these situation will be taqdiri, whether it is alif at the end, or wow at the end, or ya at the end. For example, you say, Aksha. So I fear. So when you say I fear, can you put a Dhamma here? It's a present tense verb. At the end, it should be a Dhamma because nothing is connected here. So what happens is that we, we have a Dhamma, but it will be Dhamma al muqaddara Okay, so when you have Alif at the end, you're, you have to go resort back to Taqdiri. Same thing would be happen when you have wow. Uh, yeah, you can say yasfu, uh, yasfu, uh, yasfu, uh, something to get clear. Like for example, you say yasfu al jaw, uh, yasfu al jaw. The the weather is getting cleared up. So, but you have wow, yadu, uh, yadu, yadu. You have wow. Can you put a dhamma here? No, you cannot put dhamma. So it will be takdiri. When you have a rough state, nothing is connected to it, your uh, alama would be dhamma, but the dhamma can be zahira or it could be muqaddara. Okay, this is something that uh, you have to know. If it's alif, ya, and all three cases, alif, wow, or ya, all of these three cases, your uh, dhamma would be uh, taqdiri. Fahimtum? So something to keep in your mind. And this taqdiri concept is exactly the same thing with regards to noun or the verbs. Okay, so this is something that uh, should be easy in a sense. Now, so we're still at the rough state. So remember what he said for the rough, you have the alama of dhamma and you have alama of noon. So what is noon has to do? What is noon? Let's uh, read it. 
it says wa amma noon fatakunu alamatan lil raf so it will be a sign for the raf fil fi'li for the verb al mudhari idha ittasala bihi dhamiru tathniya okay aw dhamir jam so tathniya is the dual so if the pronoun the dual pronoun is connected or the jam the plural pronoun is connected aw dhamir al muannath muannatha mukhataba or the second person feminine pronoun is connected. So what are they talking about? They are talking about what are the domir of Muthanna Tathniya. So you have, let's say, Yadha Bani. Yes. And also, uh, also what? Tadha Bani. Tadha Bani. And this is also, remember, uh, we mentioned that the mudare, we say it is similar to nouns. And this is also another way they are similar. As you know, in noun, when you do dual, we add alif and nun, kitabani, qalamani. And that same thing we do with the verbs as well. When we have dual, we just add alif and nun. So, yadhabani, it means they to go. Tadhabani means you to go. Right? So, this is dhamir tathniya. So, what about dhamir jam? Dhamir jam would be yadhabuna yadhabuna okay and also tadhabuna and again as you can see in in nouns we add waw and noon to make something plural muslimun muslimuna in the verbs we do the same thing so there's also you have similarities with the with the nouns and then it says adhamir muannatha al mukhataba which one is what? Uh, this noon, uh, that's what they talk about. Noon of Mukhataba. Mukhataba is, is the one you're addressing, meaning second person. So these all five verbs, they have a special name. Okay. The author will mention later, but he did not mention now. Yes, exactly. Ahsant. Uh, so these are the Af'al al Khamsa. Al Af'al al Khamsa. Ahsant. So there, there's another name for al-amthila al-khamsa, uh, but I think al-af'al al-khamsa is more used, but al-amthila al-khamsa is more precise. There's no one on discussing that matter, but uh, I think the most common one is al-af'al al-khamsa. So these five verbs, their arab is by this huruf, this noon, whether the noon exists or not. If the noon exists, then it will be in the rough state. So now you might be questioning, you might be wondering, okay, so if that's the case, so where is the dhamir? They're talking about the dhamir of tathniya. Huh? Can someone tell me what is the pronoun here? Alif, ahsant. So here the alif is your dhamir. And this ya has nothing to do with dhamir also. The ya is huruful uh, mudare and it indicates a few things. There's a different discussion about that, but that is not your dhamir. Okay, your dhamir is this alif. Faimto, your dhamir is this wow. This is alif of tathniya. This is wow al jama'ah. And this is ya. This ya is your dhamir. So this noon is only, only job of this noon is for your arab. So as the author said, if there is noon, having this noon, it is your uh, indication of that this verb is in the rough state. Now, so we have done with the rough state for the verbs. The, for the verb, the rough states are two. There's two alama. One is dhamma and one is uh, thubut and noon. Meaning the having this noon is the alama. And now we'll go into a nasb state. So what are, what are the alama of the nasb for the verbs? So for the verbs, we also have fatha. For example, he says, for ammal fatha, we talked about that it will be for three different situations. It will be for the nouns, all, all of these things. And he says it's also for fi'l mudare idha dakhala alayhi nasibun wa lam yattasil bi akhirihi shay. So he said as for the fatha to be a alama, sign of the verb, two things has to happen. It has to, the verb has to be preceded by one of the nasib, nawasib, one of the tools that makes the verb into mansub. The whole discussion is coming when the verb becomes a uh, mansub. We'll discuss them later. But the only thing he's saying that if one of those things has to come, okay, and also lam yattasil bi akhirihi shay, that means you cannot have any other pronouns connected to it. 
in this situation you will have your fil mudare would be mansub by fatha for example you say you can say lan adhaba here's your fatha lan adhaba i will not go and this land those discussion is coming don't worry i think you guys already know about some of them but we will have detailed discussion uh in the next classes inshallah okay so there's nothing connected so you have the this fatha is indicating that this is your uh man so this is a, a nasb state now now with regards to fi'l al mu'tal what happens with the weak verbs the verbs that has alif wow and ya in the now state it's the same thing as the noun only time it will be taqdiri uh, when you have alif or either it's stick alif or or ya alif doesn't matter so for example you can say lan aksha here's now we have a fatha here we have a fatha on the alif but we cannot see it we cannot put it because why because of ta'adhur alif cannot take any haraka simple as that so anytime Sadif comes, you have to do a, an estimation. But what about when you have a wow and ya? In those situations, it won't be taqdiri. You can put haraka. So for example, you say uh, ya du'u. If you say lan, now uh, we're supposed to have a fatha in here. Can you put a fatha? Hmm? Can you put fatha and wow? Yes, you can put fatha and wow. Wow has no problem with fatha. It would not be a taqdir. It's a little bit tricky, but you have to know. Okay, you need to know. And also, same thing would be for a verb that is ending with ya. So, for example, uh, yajri. Yajri. Yajri means to run. Uh, run. So, you can say, lan yajri. He will not run. Yajri ya. You can put a fatha. No problem. Okay, so when it comes to mansub state, fatha is not a problem for the wow and ya. But Alif is always a problem because Ali, Alif cannot take any haraka. Is it clear, guys? So we've read this part. Whatever I'm reading, I'll just, uh, I'll just highlight them. Jayid. Now, we are still in the Nas state. So in the Nas, one of the alama for the verb is that it will take a fatha. Second alama is something that we've been talking, which is the noon. So the alama is Hadfun noon. So it goes back to the same verbs. Always remember these five verbs are very special. Al-Afal al-Khamsa. Their Arab is different. So for these five ver verbs, when you have Noon, Thubut and Noon is the Alama of the Raf. Okay? But what happens in the Nasb? So both Nasb and Jazim, as we'll come to see, that its Alama is Hadfin Noon. We the deletion, the omission of the noon would be alama. We remove this noon. For example, let's go back here. Alam yadhaba. Here's the alama because after lan we know the verb has to be mansubs. Uh, it has to be nas. So here the way we put alama in the other cases we change from the dhamma to fatha. Here our alama is that just get rid of this noon. So lan yadhaba. That is your uh, your alama that this verb is right now. Uh, in the state of state of nasb or it could be state of jazm so anytime you see a present tense verb because past tense verb you know that past tense verb uh, the haba this alif is part of the pronoun so there's nothing wrong with this there's no you know this is how it sh should be but in the present tense verb if you see a uh, dual alif and there's no noon it is in the it's not in the state of ra something is happening it, it is in the state of uh, the nasb or uh, jazm now, so that's what he's saying. He says, Here he's mentioning the word afal al khamsa. He should have defined this thing in the beginning, subhanallah, but he's defining what afal al khamsa means. So that's what he's saying. This noon is supposed to be there in the rough state, but the way you make it into nasb is by removing this noon. Now, uh, so that covers uh, that covers our the second state, which is the nasb. So we have covered the raf and the nasb. And what left? Hmm? Should we go into uh, khafd? Hmm? Should we start reading and look for how the verb becomes khafd? Jar? 
No, because there's no jar in the verbs. Verbs cannot have sukun. So instead we go al jazm. So this jazm state is exclusively for the verbs. He says il jazmi alamatan. There are two alama, two signs as sukun wal khaf. He says for amma sukun as for the sukun for the yakunu alamatan lil jazmi fil fi'l mudare al sahi al akhir. For the jazm sign would be for the verbs which is sahi. Remember, that's why the last class we had this discussion. I know this uh, issue will come about where we have to understand this concept of sahi and uh, mu'tal. If the verb is sahi, you don't even have to say, if you say sahi, you don't even have to say uh, akhir because uh, sahi verbs uh, cannot have any of these uh, haraka anyway, whether in the beginning, in the middle, or the end. And then its alama would be sukun. So, for example, the same goes back to the verb. Uh, Yadhab. Yadhab. So you have sukun. So one way we get a sukun is, inshallah, we'll have a whole discussion. Is the uh, lam, lam yadhab. He did not go. So here, this lam is making this verb into majizum, and the alama of the jazm is what the alama of jazm is sukun. So the conditions were what that it has to be sahih at the end. Meaning there cannot be in huruf or illa at the end. And the ba is not huruf illa, so we can clearly put a jazm. And then he said, وَأَمَّا الْحَذْ Had means to remove. فَيَكُونُ عَلَامَةً لِلْجَزْمِ فِي الْفِعِلِ الْمُضَارِ مُعْتَ الْآخِرِ وَفِي الْأَفْعَالِ الْخَمْسَ The removing, it happens for two different situations. One of the situation is, he said, when you have, you have what? Mu'tal al akhir. But the end you have huruf al We'll talk about this thing. Another one is al afal al khamsa. Let me talk, talk about the al afal al khamsa because something that we have covered already. So it's the same situation. You have yad uh, bani. We said when you add lan, it becomes what? We remove the noon. But what, what happens when it becomes majizum? You add lam. Huh? It's the same situation. You will remove this noon. So for the afal al-khamsa, the way we indicate the verb is in the jazm state is by removing the noon. You know, this is the same situation happens in the noun. Sometimes uh, we have one form for two different states. For example, muslimina, it is for both uh, nasb and also jar state. Muslimaini would be both for the nasb and the jar state. Same thing here. Okay, so the removing of noon would be for both nasb and the jazm state. So this is easy, something we talked about. The second type would be when you have weak letter at the end. Okay, this is the tricky one, weak letter at the end. So for example, you say, uh, you say, lan yajri. Now you have yajri, initial was yajri. Right with the ya yeah there. Uh, the way you make this verb into a jism state is by removing huruful illa. So we have the huruful illa at the end, ya, yeah, so we have to remove this. So it becomes lam yajri with kasra. There's no there's no ya yeah here. Okay, there's no huruful illa. You say lam adro adro. It was with the wow before, right? But what happens? You have to remove. You have to remove this wow. Adro. So the wow is missing. But my mistake, it should be lam. Uh, so I'm saying lam, I think I'm writing lam. So it will be lam yajiri. He did not run. So here, lam adro. Okay. Uh, I did not supplicate. So what happened? The wow is missing. Okay. So these things can be a little bit tricky. Uh, remember, we were talking about taqdiri when you have the verbs ending at the alif. Wow and ya yeah. is this situation the hadh happens for all different situ all of this situation? Yes, the hadh happens for all of this situation. I say lam aksha. So remember that there was an alif maksura, so you will remove the hadh will happen for all alif, it will happen for wow, and it will also happen for ya. Yeah. Okay, because the author clearly mentioned that uh mortal al akhir. Any mortal akhir, mortal. Remember, any of the huruf al illa you have alif or wow or ya will be removed.
going quickly back to uh, this um, concept of Tagdiri, uh, because the book did not mention, and also the explanation did not mention, basically, Tagdiri for the rough state will happen in all three situations. For the alif, wow, and ya. So rough for alif, wow, and ya. All of these situations will be Tagdiri. For the nasf, nasf, it will be only Tagdiri for alif. For the wow, you can put fatha. For ya, you can put fatha, no problem. So only, this is only, will be Tagdiri. For, for the jazam, it is you have so you don't have to think about tagdiri because you just remove remove the latter altogether. So alama would have to be huruf al illa. So the alama would be the removing of the huruf of illa. Fahimtum? Is it clear? Now, so the next the author he goes back into the whole discussion again. We have talked about this thing. So now he's going to look into the whole era from the haraka uh, of perspective you know he repeats himself here so we don't have to uh, go back here again here at the end he discuss what is afal al khamsa he says wa hiya yaf'alani taf'alani yaf'aluna taf'aluna wa taf'alina okay so you remember i mentioned the book's organization is a little bit uh, strange but uh, nonetheless that's what we have here so basically to make a quick review in the mudare i'll write it here so for the rough would be dhamma uh, or it be thubut thubut annun okay so it would be dhamma uh, dhamma and thubut annun so these are the two alama for the nasb would be what fatha and hadh hadh annun so for the jazm it would be sukun okay it could be sukun or we have two types of hadh it could be Hadh and noon, or it could be Hadh Harf Al Illa, removing the weak letter. These are the three ways we know uh, the verb is in the jazm state. So this one is a little bit tricky. Fahimtham, any question? Uh, let me see if I want to read something from the book or not. Now, what is the question? How about all the other signs of Rav? So uh, the alif, those things are muqaddara. Uh, these are part of the dhamma. Meaning, the main sign is the dhamma. But what happens when you have alif, uh, ya, or wow? This is when the muqaddara happens, taqdiri happens. So it's still, even if you say taqdiri, but what is the haraka? Hmm? Ya du'u. Huh? It's still dhamma. So the haraka is still dhamma, but you cannot see that you cannot put the dhamma because you have to do a taqdiri because this is thiqal, it's very hard to pronounce. We talked about all these different reasons. You have ta'adhur, you have thiqal, and you have munasib. Okay, okay. So now for the shar and mumta. So one thing that I wanted to read, let me see what I want to read. I like to at least give you some taste of the shark. You know, you have a little bit of connection with the explanation. So uh, I think, inshallah, it will, it's beneficial. Okay. So I wanted to read this uh, page and then, inshallah, we'll wrap up. This page is already something that we have talked about. So this is the topic of Al Afal Al Khamsa. So he gives you a nice chart. So he goes, Al Afal Al Khamsa here. Uh, so the five verbs are Kullu fi'lin mudarin ittasala bihi aliful ithnain. So Kullu fi'lin mudarin. Then he nicely showed you what are the alif al exactly what we showed you. And he's going to do this thing for all the three different states. So you have yaf'alani taf'alani. Aw waw al jama'a. Yaf'aluna taf'aluna. Aw ya al mukhataba. You have taf'alina. This is for the rough state. I think I should have written this one. Rough state. For the not state, you say lan yaf'ala the hath noon. Okay? So he's just uh, giving the same thing what we talked about. And for the jazm state, he removes as well. Okay, and then he goes a little bit into details. For example, here Allah says, يُؤْمِنُونَ billahi." This is one of your, I mean, afal khamsa Okay, so you have يُؤْمِنُونَ billahi." So what is the state of this verb? Huh? Raf, yes, marfu. Exactly, why? Because ثُبُوت noon. So it goes, I'm not going to read this whole thing. يُؤْمِنُونَ فِعْلْ مُضَارِ مَرْفُوْ عَلَمَةُ رَفِهِ ثُبُوتِ النُّونَ نِيَابَةً عَنِ الدَّمَّةِ Then he will say, لِأَنَّ مِنْ عَفَالِ الْخَمْسَةِ And then he goes into the further Arab, which we don't have to go through it. 
Now, as far as for the NASP and the JAR state, subhanAllah, this is always my best example from the Quran, giving an example of the NASP and the JASM state of the Afal al Khamsa, because Allah used both of them in the same sentence when He says, Fa'illam taf'alu, yes, lam taf'alu, which is the JASM, majzum, walan taf'alu. Man sub. Okay, so in one statement, he, we have both of this situation. So what happens? As you can see, both of them is is have a noon. But how do you know which one is what? You look at what's causing this drop of noon. So if it's one of the roof of the jism, then it will emerge zoom. If it's one of the tools of a mansub, it will be uh, a mansub. But this verse is really one of the powerful verses in the Quran uh, when Allah challenge to the kuffar the verse i think starts like wa in kuntum fi raibi mimma nazzalna ala abidina fa'tu bi sura if you are have any doubt what allah has sent meaning the quran ala abidina to our slave which he means prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa'tu bi sura by the way uh, ata means uh, ata means to come when you say ata bi that means it's bring so when you say fa'tu bi that means bring Surah, and Allah mentioned uh, indefinite word here, surah, that means any chapter. And that's why the scholars, they usually pick the smallest chapter of the Quran as a challenge for the kuffars. Because Allah did not say that being a medium-sized surah or the big size, he said any surah. So then he says, فَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا And if you are not able to do, if he said in the past tense, meaning you weren't able to do, makes it a confirmation that you haven't been able to do it and you will never be able to do it so this is this verse gives you goosebumps when you read it